So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you 11 hacks that will make your experience with ChatGPT a lot better, even if you've been using it for a long time, because I'm sure that there's a thing or two that you're not aware of that will help you get more done, save more time and potentially make more money. And if you guys stick till the end, I'm going to share with this prompting hack that will make ChatGPT 10 times smarter. And I don't see anybody talking about this. So let's get started. So the first feature that I want to talk about is the screen sharing feature on the mobile device. So not many people know this, but if you have ChatGPT installed on your phone, you can actually share your screen with ChatGPT and it can see what you see and it can help you real time. So I was playing with this earlier and I have a trip coming up to Japan soon and I want to get ChatGPT to help me make some recommendations. All right. So I have the mobile app open now and I just can simply click on the bottom right corner. There's a voice button here and once i do that i'm going to click on the three dotted line here and share screen okay and i'm going to go to google maps which i have open here and i'm looking at kyoto so chat gpt can you help me make some recommendations on where to go in kyoto absolutely kyoto is such a beautiful city with so many amazing spots to visit uh, if you love temples definitely check out kinkakuji the golden pavilion it's absolutely stunning uh, and then there's fushimi and aritaisha with all the beautiful tori gates so i'm looking at the toji temple here what do you think of this one toji temple is definitely a great choice uh, it's famous for having the tallest wooden pagoda in japan which is super impressive the temple grounds are beautiful and it's got a lot of history yeah. and cultural and how much does it cost to enter according to japan travel the entrance fee for toji temple is 500 yen for adults and 300 yen for children all right thank you i am also in my school community so how do i write a post writing a post in your school community is pretty straightforward uh, you just go to the community section click on the new post button and then you can type out whatever you'd like to share uh, you can add a catchy title some engaging content to even attach images or links so is this the page that i'm supposed to be in it looks like you're in the right place uh the community Community page on school is where you can create and share posts with your members. If you have any other questions or need help with anything else, just let me know. Thank you. So that's pretty useful, right? That is the screen sharing feature. But did you know that ChatGPT can also have access to your front and rear facing camera? And that brings me to my second point here is using the camera in voice mode. Now, I want to give you a quick example of this because I was looking to buy a plant for my backyard and, you know, I have zero knowledge about plants. So I went to the store last weekend and I wanted to put this to the test to see if ChatGPT can actually give me instant recommendations on the spot, right? So all you need to do is to open the ChatGPT app and you can click on the voice icon on the right side here. And then you're going to see the camera icon on the left. You can click on it and now you can see me here. And now I'm going to flip the camera so you can see what I'm looking at here. Hey ChatGPT, I'm looking for a plant to grow in my backyard. I'm looking for something durable and low maintenance. Is this a good one? Absolutely. Both the cypress and juniper plants you showed are great choices. If you're looking for something durable and low maintenance, uh, they can handle different weather conditions pretty well. And once they're established, they don't need a lot of water. And how tall can this get? So for the cypress, depending on the variety, it can grow quite tall, sometimes up to about 10 meters or even more over time. Junipers, on the other hand, can vary a lot depending on the species, but many garden varieties will reach around two to four meters. So that's pretty good, right? So I love that how you don't have to type on your phone. Uh, you can just have a dialogue, a conversation with it as if you're FaceTiming with somebody. Now, we know that ChatGPT is really, really good with image generation. So I'm going to show you how to create a thumbnail, which is something that I do quite a lot. So I've got a thumbnail here by Matt Diavella. Let's say I want to recreate this thumbnail. I want to change some elements here. And I also want to do a face swap, right? So I'll just simply drag and drop this into ChatGPT. And I've got this second image here, just as a sample person that I want to replace the original face with. So I'm also going to put that in here. And then I'm going to click on tools, create image. And I'm going to say, replace the first thumbnail with the person in glasses. As simple as that. Maybe I'll just write, keep the remaining elements intact. There you go. And just in a few minutes, it's replaced the original face with this new guy here. And it looks pretty good. Now, let's say I want to change some elements here because I don't want to make it the same, right? So I can just click on this button here and I can just highlight what I want to change. And then I can just describe what I want. Change the color of the drill to yellow there you go so it changed the drill to yellow but the drill is 
a bit touching the frame here, but I'm sure with another iteration, it's gonna correct the mistake. So as you can see, it's pretty quick if you want to do a thumbnail design like this. Otherwise, you'll spend so much time laying all these things individually one by one. But uh, with anything that you do, you don't want to just copy exactly. You can follow the same idea, but never want to copy it exactly. Now, one tip I can give you with this, if you are trying to create a second thumbnail, which is completely different from this, make sure that you do it on a new chat because otherwise it's going to reference previous photos here and it's going to mess up your thumbnail. Now, before I talk about the next feature, I want to introduce you to today's sponsor, .online domains. So with any business that you build, you're going to need a website with a professional domain. But here's the hard part. Finding a good domain name is really hard these days. Most of the time, you can't use the name you want or you have to end up going with a low quality domain extension. This is exactly why I recommend Dot Online Domains. They're trusted by over 3.5 million businesses worldwide. And here's what I like about this. You can actually get the exact name that you want. So instead of having extra letters in your domain name, I can just type in my exact name, Jason Lee Agency Online, for example, and I get the name I want and it looks like a legitimate business. And here's something that people don't realize. Having online right in your domain actually helps your SEO because the word online is searched over 500 million times monthly. And that means your website becomes more visible just for the domain itself. Now, since I'm partnering with Dot Online Domains for this video, I've got a special deal for you guys. You can get this domain for just 99 cents for your first year using my code Jason Lee. So you just need to enter that code here at checkout and you'll get that domain for 99 cents. And I've got the link down in the description below. And thanks again, Dot Online, for sponsoring this video. Now, next, I want to show you a feature that is very powerful, something that I ignored for the longest time. But once I tried it, I was quite blown away. So this is the connectors feature on ChatGPT. So basically, ChatGPT will allow you to connect to Dropbox, Gmail, uh, Box, whatever it is, your calendar even. And this is pretty useful if you want to reference your Google Drive, maybe it has some important material that you want to reference to in your the articles that you create, things like this. But what I really want to show you is the connection to Gmail. So, you know, I get a lot of emails from people that offer me a service, things like, you know, a thumbnail design, video editing services, script writing, and let's say now I'm looking for a video editor and I want a list of all these people. I want ChatGPT to do that instead of me going through Gmail manually, right? Because searching for emails one by one is a pain. So I will click on tools here and click on run deep research. And once you do that, the second dropdown is going to appear here and you will click on this and you're going to see web search, Gmail, whatever is connected to your ChatGPT account. So you want to uncheck this and you just want it to search your Gmail account. So you want to type something like this. Go to my email and give me a list in table format of people who have pitched their service like thumbnail design, video editing, script writing in the last 12 months. Include their name, email, the type of service and a link to their portfolio if available. So I want this in a table format. So click generate. Now, fast forward 10 minutes from now, I got this result, which is pretty good. Give me all the people that reached out to me with, you know, exactly the same layout that I wanted. Name, email, service type, and a link to their portfolio. And you can see that it completed the job in 10 minutes. So that took a while, but essentially that's faster than me going manually into each email. So if you click on this, you'll see the activity and you can see the emails or every single thing that it did to find the information, right? So as you can see, this is pretty handy if you were looking for something that was two years ago, maybe, and buried in like a hundred different threads in one email. So that's pretty awesome. Now, the next feature that I want to show you is the memory function in ChatGPT. Now, we know that ChatGPT's memory is based on all the chats that you've had with it previously, which I think is pretty useful. So whenever I bring up the same topic, I don't have to always tell the entire story again. Now, for some reason, if you don't want ChatGPT to save anything into the memory again, you can actually go to settings here and go to personalization and you can actually toggle this off, right? And it will not save anything to memory. And if you look at manage memories here, you can see a list of things that ChatGPT remembers based on your previous conversations. So this is like going to your browser history and you can even delete individual ones, the ones that you don't want it to reference in the future. Now, I personally like to leave this on because I do want it to have more context, which will give you a better response. But of course, there are cases where I want to ask something that's quite personal and I don't want it to save it in memory. So during those times, you can just click on this button here, which will turn on temporary chat. So whatever you write here, it will not be saved into its memory. And once you close this window, it'll be deleted in 30 days. So think of it like going to your incognito mode on Google Chrome. It's kind of the same thing.
Now this next feature is using Apple Notes together with ChatGPT. And this is a super powerful combination. And I wanna show you exactly how I use it. Now, I use this mostly to write newsletters and YouTube scripts. So instead of sitting down on my laptop and typing out my ideas, I find it easier to talk and record myself. So what I'll do is I'll open my Apple Notes app and I'll just record a voice note. And the nice thing about this is that I don't have to worry about being perfect. I can make pauses, make mistakes, because ChatGPT will literally clean this up for me. And I actually like doing this when I'm having a walk outside because for some reason I get a lot of great ideas when I'm out walking. And plus there are no distractions. So I would speak for about 10, 15 minutes. And the reason why I use Apple Notes is that once you're done talking, it automatically transcribes your voice note. And what makes it even better is that if you're on a Mac, you'll instantly see this on your Mac as well. So you don't have to transfer any files. All of these are super seamless. Now I'll just copy the transcript and I'll put it into ChatGPT and I'll go to my projects, simply ask it, write a 1500 YouTube script based on my transcript, clearly separate each heading. There are five sections, make each section 300 words and always add examples to back up each point, add an intro and outro. And there you go, your script is now ready and each section is clearly written out with examples and it turned a very messy voice note into a usable script for my YouTube video. Now the next feature is projects. So I can't stress how important this is, especially if you have a task that you do quite often. For example, if you're writing a YouTube script or you have a newsletter that you write every single week, you want to use projects. So let me open the tab here and you can see that I have a bunch of projects here. And today we're going to look at YouTube scripts. So you can see that I already have instructions for it. Uh, this is kind of my template for creating YouTube scripts, how it should write the introduction, how it should write the body, you know, writing style and using pattern breakers to make it more human. And also a CTA should be also included in every script, right? So I have all this ready. So every time I have some ideas, to write a script about, I don't have to prompt it every single time. It saves me a lot of time. So for example, if I want to write a script, so let's say this could be my prompt here, write a 1500 word YouTube script without timestamps based on the bullet points below, include a short intro and outro, expand each section to around 300 words because we got five sections, right? And let's say I have some bullet points already. I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, and I wanted to expand all these ideas and I wanted to write a full YouTube script. So I have instructions ready. I've got the bullet points ready and I can just hit send. Now I'm going to use the 4.5 model here. I feel like this is better for writing. So later in the video, I'm going to tell you what models to use and for what purpose. But for this, I'm going to use 4.5 and I'm going to hit generate. Now, as you can see, we've got all the sections written out, you know, 300 words each, which is exactly what I wanted. And you know, most people, this is what they're probably going to do, right? They're going to read all this. And if they don't like it, you're probably going to prompt it again, you know, hey, rewrite the whole thing, make it friendlier and all those things. But what if you just want to make changes on one thing, right? Maybe you don't like this paragraph here. Can you just edit this portion here? And that brings me to the next feature, which is canvas mode. So most people are not aware of this, but it's quite useful if you know how to use it. And it's actually perfect for writing long scripts like this. And I want to show you how to use canvas mode. Now to enter canvas mode, you can simply say, write this in canvas mode. And just like that, it's going to bring up this sidebar here, which is where your prompt is going to be. And it's going to rewrite everything on this canvas that you can actually edit. Now, let's say I want to just edit this part. So I can just highlight this section here and then I can click on Ask ChatGPT and I can just say, add more personal examples to back up this point. And just by doing that, it's only going to edit this part and not the entire thing. So as you can see, it's added some examples here. You can see whether uh, that fits your narrative. Point here is that you can just edit one part instead of rewriting the whole entire article. And if you look at the bottom corner here, there's an icon. Here. So you can change the reading level without having to prompt it again. So you click on this, you can just adjust the reading level. Maybe it's too complex, too professional. You want it to be simpler. You can bring it down to middle school level, click this again, and it will re rewrite the whole thing uh, in a simpler language. And you can also adjust the length. Maybe you want to make this a bit longer or a bit shorter, you can do that. And also add the final polish and make all this a bit better. Now, I also get a lot of questions about which models to actually use, because we got 4.0, we got O3, we got O3 mini, we got now 4.5, right? There's so many models to choose from. Which one is actually the best for you? Now, for me, I actually just focus on three models, which is what most people should look at as well. Now, the first model here is 4.0. So you want to use this for most tasks, right? It's going to give you the quickest response. It's going to be suitable for general tasks like writing emails, writing tweets, writing short posts like this. Now, the next one, 03, 
is what I always use for research and reasoning. And this is for doing things that requires more thinking, more calculations, the one that I just did for the school community building. So this is gonna take longer because it has to search the web, it has to gather some research, but it's gonna give you better output. Now, if you're doing any type of writing or creative task, you wanna use 4.5. I feel like it's a little bit better for writing. It makes it more human. Uh, so it's really, really good for writing newsletters or YouTube. Now, the next feature here is a prompting hack that I want to share with you guys. And this is especially useful if you're asking it about strategy questions or requires some kind of reasoning. This is very, very helpful. So there are two parts to this. So let's say, for example, I want to tell ChatGPT that I want to build a school community around vibe coding, right? Based on other successful paid communities in similar niches, provide the growth strategies that I should follow. And my goal is to make $20,000 a month. So most people will just leave it at that. But what I always do is I always add this last part here, which is ask me penetrating questions to give you more context before answering. So once you do that, it's gonna ask you for more context in what you're trying to achieve before it gives you an answer. So I think this is really, really powerful and it will give you a better output that way. So as you can see, it's asking all these questions. Who is your target market? You know, Who is your existing audience? Uh, what is your core promise? What are people gonna get inside the paywall? What are you trying to charge? How much do you think you can charge? So I think these are really, really good questions that maybe if you work with a consultant, these are the questions that they're gonna ask anyway. So by answering all these questions, it will definitely give you a better answer, but you don't really wanna stop there because you wanna push GPT to the limits, right? So there's one more thing that I did, and that is telling ChatGPT that I gave Claude and Gemini the same exact prompt, and it gave me a way better answer. Point here is to make it jealous. So here's what I wrote. Hey, I thought you're the best AI tool. This answer is actually a four out of 10. I asked Gemini and Claude the same question and it gave me a nine out of 10. For some reason that unlocks more brain power. So if you're doing any type of research or tasks that require uh, more reasoning, more thinking, give it a try, you know? But let me know in the comments, guys, if you ever tried this before, I'm just curious if you guys get a better response this way. And that is all for today. If you like these tips, I'd appreciate it if you give it a like and subscribe. I will see you guys in the next one.